Let me say that God's Word is always true, even if it hits us right between the eyes. Has anybody ever been hit between the eyes with the Word of God? Have you ever read anything and you go, you know, you go, oops, I, man, I sure would have, I wish I'd have read in another spot <laughs> today. You know, I'm just cutting up. Some of you know exactly, you've got a rigid plan, you know exactly where you're, you're going to read, and some of you read like a shotgun, firing a shotgun, it just a scatter here and there, and, and whatever. But I want you to know that all the words that are in this book that I'm holding called the Holy Bible are forever settled in heaven, and heaven and earth will pass away someday as we know it right now. It won't. Anyway, don't, don't go down that trail to get to worrying about it. Because the earth is going to remain and it's going to be re remade and everything, be a new heaven and new earth. But anyway, um, but heaven and earth as we know it will pass away, but the Word of God will never pass away. We'll, we'll be judged out of the words in this book. How many of y'all believe that? We'll be judged out of the words that's in this book. It's according to what we've done with it or how we've responded to it or whatever. But regardless of how we responded, whatever we've done, or how we tried to interpret it, or even if we tried ever to twist it around to make it fit our situation. You know, many, many times people say, well, really, here's what it said, but it really don't mean that. We try to explain what it means. Let me tell you something. In most cases, and I love the plain old King James Version, in most cases, it's not hard to understand what he said. If he said it, he meant it. Amen? If he said it, he meant it. And, and, and God, the Word of God tells us that He's not a man that He should lie, neither son of man that He'd repent. He's not going to repent. And He even said this. He said, I'm not going to alter the thing which I have spoken. It don't make no difference what the Supreme Court of the Lamb would say or try to interpret about anything. Murder or whatever. I don't care what the Supreme Court would say. It's what the Supreme God has said, what our Supreme, the Supreme Being has already said. Amen? It ain't going to matter what some judge in some courtroom, no matter how high the court is. It's not going to matter what they rule or what they say or when they hit that gavel, I think is what you call it, but that wooden mallet, okay, or the hammer. When they crack it down and, 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 and make a sentence or a judgment, it's not, if it don't line up with this, then I'm going to tell you something, it's not going to hold water. No matter who. I don't care what the Congress would vote on or say, or what the Senate, senators would agree on or say, or what the governors of the state would say. It's going to be what thus saith God says. It's going to be the final say and the final authority. And I honestly believe, oh, you know, over in the book of Revelation, it says, every one place says, and the books were open. I believe this is going to be some of those books that are going to be open to. 66 books in the Word of God. I believe those books are going to be open. And we're going to be judged from the books that are forever settled in heaven. And there's another one. There's an old song we used to sing, and I always loved it. <clears throat> How many of y'all remember this one? <clears throat> And I can't sing it all, but you that know it, you can sing along with me. Let's see. I'm just going to start with the chorus. See how many of y'all know it and you sing it. Long ago, long ago, yes, the old account was settled long ago for the records clear today for he washed my sins away and the old account was settled long ago and he talked about in the in the in the books of heaven there was a book there and it talked about your name either being in it or not being in it and it also talked about there was a count that was growing every day but one day we got that old account settled because we accepted Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior. Amen. And go ahead and you give him a praise. And, and, and then many of y'all have been singing this song for a long time. Oh, long ago, long ago, 
Yes, the old account was settled long ago. For the record's clear today, for he washed my sins away. When the old account was settled long ago. How many of y'all remember that time? Woo! Praise God. Don't, you know, don't sin feel heavy and don't sin feel weighty. Don't it, don't it, don't it, isn't it? Uh, I was going to compare it to something else, but I'm not going to compare it to that. But, you know, wouldn't it be bad if you had to, you know, it's kind of like the man. It's kind of like the man traveling on the side of the road that time. And he had a big old, big old bag, big old bag. And he was carrying it and, and uh, he'd walk a little bit, set it down and wait. And finally an old timer come by with a wagon, a horse in a wagon. He was going to the little next little town and going to pick up some supplies. Didn't have nothing on the back of that wagon. And there was a, his horse or maybe a couple of horses was pulling it. And he stopped by the man. He says, sir, he said, uh, get up, go ahead and get up on the wagon. I'm, I'll, I'll be glad for you to ride with me. So the guy got up there and he had his bag up on his shoulder and got up and he was sitting on the, you know, he was sitting on the, uh, the little wagon. Y'all know how the seats were made back then, the little spring under them, little kind of like a leaf spring under them. He was sitting there bouncing, holding that weight. And he rode for over a mile. Uh, down the road, and finally the guy that owned the rig said, "Sir, said, why don't you put your your burden, you know, your bag and everything down on the back, you know, ease it down off the back?" And the man looked at him, and he said that he picked up the wayfaring man. He said, "Well, sir, it's it's enough for you to pick me up without having to carry my load, also." Y'all get it? Y'all understand sometimes how we do God? Come on, don't we? we? We come to God and we ask Him for help and then we still won't carry that old heavy load around when we need to give it to Him. You know, ease it down. It's just as easy for God to carry us as it is what we're carrying around. Amen? How many of y'all know he, he wants to relieve you of your burden? He's our burden bearer. He wants to relieve you. He wants to give you peace and joy and contentment. Come on. He don't want you carrying around your struggles and all your problem and all your stuff and all your junk. Come on. Amen. You know, some people, let me just say this. Some people, it's what I would term, they go around and I would call them a, I'm just meddling right now this morning for a few minutes. And when I read the scripture, God's going to meddle. Okay. But some people are what I call a worry wart. Anybody know one of them or any, anybody are one of them? I mean, either way, you know one or you are one. You, you see any worry warts? Some of y'all are afraid that if you raise your hand that you know one that they'll think it's you. <laughs> after I said what I said. Well, guess what? All have worried and come short of the benefits of the glory of God. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But let me tell you something. All of us have carried stuff around before and worried about stuff and fretted about stuff. When, when we, like the song says, about what a friend we have in Jesus. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. How many of you know that we can carry stuff around and worry and fret over it and, and fume and, and be concerned and, and, and honestly pretty soon we can't even eat. You understand what I'm talking about? And uh, Perry, please know I, it has nothing to do with what you and I talked about. Okay, he knows. We've talked about this before and stuff. But we, how many of you have done this before? You've been carrying it around to where you almost got sick at your stomach. And then finally you come, you wake up, you come to your senses. And you say, God, I, I need some help. I can't, I can't handle this anymore. And really, when you, when you really, if you'll evaluate the situation by worrying and fretting about it, it didn't change or stop or fix none of it, did it? The problem is still there. The stuff is still there. The junk is still there. The what you were concerned about is still there. And if we'll just say, God, I can't bear this load, this heavy load. 
uh, I, I need to give it off. I need it like the man on the wagon. <laughs> you might as well throw the load on the wagon and sit there and at least enjoy the ride as much as you can, even if you're contemplating what in the world are you going to do, even if you feel desperate, like what in the world am I going to do after we get to that next town or the next stopping place or the get off place? What am I going to do? How am I going to handle it? How's things going to work out? But still relieve that load right now for a while because that heavy load that we're carrying, I want you to know we've got a master that's our burden bearer, and he can carry that load. You know, I'm so glad that he, 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 he is our burden bearer. That's what Isaiah talked about him some and called him. And I want you to know that by you, you know, you can't fix it or stop it or change it by carrying it around or worrying or fretting about it or looking at it all the time or opening the sack up and looking at all your stuff. But I want you to know he can. He can give you a peace that will pass all human understanding. And I like this is what he said. It'll keep your hearts and your mind. <laughs> have you ever, no joke, have you ever had your mind with so much stuff going on? It was like a, anybody fool with a computer or iPad sometime and it gets slow because it's so crowded and so loaded with stuff. I don't even know everything about them or what you call it. But it gets so loaded up, you got so many different pages open up, if I can say it that way. You got so many different things open up that that old computer gets slow because it's got too much on its brain trying to keep up. Am I explaining it good enough where you understand? You, you know, your phone will even work better sometimes if you close a bunch of stuff out. And sometimes if you shut it off and leave it off two or three or four or five minutes and then turn it back on, then it starts operating a whole lot faster. And I, I've been before, I've had this on my brain, something else on my brain, you on my brain, and him on my brain, and her on my brain, and she on my brain, and house on my brain, and a vehicle on my brain, and a bad running car on my brain, and a broke lawnmower on my brain, and something broke at the church on my brain, and somebody else that had a problem on my brain, and somebody else that's in the hospital on my brain, and somebody going to have surgery on my brain, and someplace I got to go on my brain, and I'm getting hungry on my brain. And have y'all ever been that way? And just run around and the next thing you know, you just feel like, man, I need to clear my head. And I promise you, Jack Daniels won't do it. If you don't watch out, you'll be on the mask of a ship and wonder how you got up there. How many of you know that scripture, what I just said? It said, don't even look at that stuff if it moves itself around in the cup, in the in the bottle or the pot or the whatever. That's what it said. And you know what that means? That means fermentation. And, 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 and if you look at it long enough, you're liable to drink it. And if you drink it, you're liable to, you're liable to feel that way. You'd be like a man up on a mask and wonder how in the world you got there. Mask of a big old ship. Because it'll make you do stupid, crazy stuff. But let me tell you something. You can't, you can't ease your pain and ease your circumstances with drugs or alcohol or with people or with a person with exception of the, the Prince of Peace. I'm talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. He, if you will allow him to, he can, and he wants to, he can keep your heart and your mind in perfect peace. When your mind, Isaiah says, 26 and 3 says, when your mind is stayed upon him, he'll keep you in perfect peace. How many of you know he's the one that can do anything? He's the Almighty God. He's your Savior. He's your Lord. He's your rock. He's your shield. He's your fortress. He's your, he's your, come on, He's your burden bearer. He's your healer. Come on, He can do anything. You know, you, you can worry or fret over all kind of stuff. You can check everything a hundred times a day, and you can still worry and fret over it. But one thing about it, our God can do anything. And, and He wants to relieve us. He, he I don't, and you know, I, I know the Holy Spirit wants somebody to know, bring your burdens to the Lord and just leave them there today. And if you'll trust, the song says, if you'll trust and never doubt, He will surely bring you out. Just bring your burdens to the Lord and leave them there. Mm. We got to get great. I just feel the Holy Spirit just keeps on wanting to emphasize it. We've got a great burden bearer. He can bear your burden. He can bear your burden. And, you know, I, I can't, 
And I just can't get past this. I, right, right now, if you're in this place and you've got a heavy load on your shoulder, something you're carrying around, and you really would like some relief, you would like for the Lord to lift that heavy load. You'd like for Him to reveal Himself to you. I want you to come. I want you to come. I don't care if you sit, stand, kneel. I want you to come. I'm going to ask some people to pray too. And believe God and trust God and ask God to touch. Because I'm, I'm telling you what, it's not, it's not fun going around carrying a bunch of stuff. It's not fun sometimes. I know even business, when, when we're in business or whatever, or doing regular secular business or whatever with this old world, sometimes, I mean, it can get hectic. The load can get heavy. Sometimes even wondering how we're going to pay some bills or whatever, the load can get heavy. Somebody may be sick in our family, the load can be heavy. Sometimes somebody could be living in sin in our family, and we know it, and the load can get heavy. Sometimes somebody could have just messed something up with words, and I, man, I sure would have liked to, and I will when the Lord lets me use, share some of that scripture with you that I feel the Lord gave me. But I want you to know the Lord, the Lord can help you and touch you today with that heavy load. Some of you may be up here and you may have some guilt of your own even because something you did or said or, or something or some action. Just give it to the Lord right now. Let him lift a heavy load. Let him, let him allow his forgiveness and his love to come into your heart and your life in a powerful way today. And I know you know that he does forgive you. And it's not something that you, you hadn't already asked him for. But just right now, just accept what he has, has already given you and say, Lord, I know that your precious blood has already covered this. So now, Lord, help my mind. Keep my heart my mind. Take this heavy load. Take this burden. Take this fret. Take this care. Take it right now, Lord. I, right now, I cast all my care upon you because I know you care for me. So, Lord God, we receive right now. We receive, Lord, the help that only you can give, Lord, in this place. Praise him. Praise Him, praise Him, praise Him, praise God. Isn't it good to be in His harbor? <laughs> you know, I, I can just think of seeing a big old ship that was out on a raging storm, raging sea somewhere, coming into a safe harbor that's calm and peaceful, and then having a good, something good to anchor to, something good to tie to, you know. And praise God, that's what our Lord and Savior is to us. Amen. That's what Jesus is to us. Now, let's sing this and maybe in the wrong key, but let's do it anyway. Oh, what a friend we have in Jesus. Yes. God. All right, let's stand up and praise Him. Give Him one more praise. And let me just say thank you for being in the house of the Lord this morning. God bless you. Some of you have things to tend to, people to tend to, and, and all, and we understand that. But thank you for being in the house of the Lord. And Wednesday night, 6 o'clock, 6 to 7, have a tremendous Bible study. Tell your friends, invite people out. We'll have a good time in here for about an hour. Also, all the uh, the little one's ministry is going on, so you can be a part of that with your children, youth, and all. And so we appreciate so much. All right, God bless you. Thank you for being at Oasis.